The following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We were all going out camping, me and three friends from the university. Let me introduce my friends. This is Darren. I wouldn't say that he is our group of friends leader. Or actually, I would. He's the one that always gets us all out of the house and into the action. He's the first one to hit on that cute girl by the bar. He's the first one to jump from the roof into the swimming pool and break his legs. According to himself, <laughs> he was even more impulsive when he was a kid. I can only imagine his childhood and how often he must have broken his leg, scraped his knees and hit his head. Still, if it weren't for Darren, we wouldn't have half the amount of fun we have. This girl is Celeste. We have known each other since we were children. We met each other when she moved into the house next door when I was seven. My mom told me to go show her around the neighborhood, and after that, we were inseparable for a few years. She's a nice girl, although her health isn't the best. She has some kind of heart problem, which I forget the name of. This forced her to be away from school during extended periods of time during her childhood. Because of this, until we started university, I was her only friend. Still, she never complained and I've always seen her as a positive, happy girl. Next is me. I'm Joe. As the name implies, I'm pretty normal. I don't have any overwhelmingly bad qualities. But on the other hand, I don't have any overwhelmingly good ones either. I live in this apartment a short walk from my university. This is where us four friends usually gather before going out. This guy here, looking all relaxed on my bed, is Michael. He's my neighbor, living in the apartment next door. One day, while I had Celeste over, he just barged in. Hey man, your place looks pretty nice. Mind if I join you for dinner? He said. As you can imagine, he's pretty pushy. I don't think he realizes it himself. He came over several times after that day. After that, we somehow naturally became friends. So, one day Darren came with the idea that we should go camping. You know, camping in some woods with faces on the trees. It was a pretty smart idea at the time. Darren said his family had a cabin a little bit into the forest. So, camping we went. It could be fun, right? Of course, me, Michael, and Celeste disliked the idea of staying in a cabin. It's a camping trip. We have to sleep in the wilderness, so Darren told us about the woods near the cabin. I don't remember much about the trip to the cabin. We joked around, took a few breaks, normal stuff. Except for the, you know, trees with the faces on them. Either way, we drove up to the cabin and left the car there. We took a short break in the cabin and set out into the wilderness. We went pretty far in. I can't say how far in distance exactly, but it took several hours to get where we set up camp. The first day, we just screwed around. Nothing abnormal happened. Am I the only one seeing these trees? But then... Everyone died. So, here we are. Skinwalker. A game that's been recommended to me a couple of times. Um, I've had it on my computer here for a while, and... I never quite got around to playing it because of all these other games kind of coming up and stuff like that. Oh, so with my palette cleared, I decided to try it out finally. Hmm. 
Man, global warming sure did a number on these trees. It seems the real danger of global warming wasn't the melting polar ice caps or anything like that, but it turned all our trees into weird mazes. I set out the gamma wood for a new fire and water the cook with. Thankfully, I have this kind of weird montage camera angle thing. Man, did not only global warming turn all these trees into some weird tree wall things, but it also made these creepy swamps appear all of nowhere. What is that sound? It doesn't sound like something you'd hear in a forest. It sounds like an alarm. Hmm. Or someone like a bunch of hippies playing a bunch of bad instruments. There we go. A bucket of water. The sound stopped. What's up, Michael? How are you hanging? I should have enough wood to make the fire last a while tonight. We can cook now. Later that evening, something bad happened. What the hell is up with this fog? Every time I've been here before, there haven't ever been any fog. It's time to go sleep soon. We're all out of booze. Guess we have to go back to the town tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to that four hour trek. Maybe we shouldn't have gotten so deep in. <laughs> I can't even seem to reach the girl. Unless I can walk through you. Yes, what is that sound? Like the buzzing of bees, but not any kind of bees. Robot bees. So, I, I, is that like a better option here? Hmm, some kind of machine. I wonder if it's a chainsaw. Like there's some guy out there in the woods with a chainsaw, you know? Like he's just, he just has his chainsaw for no reason except, you know, to murder a bunch of kids camping out here. It's much better than the alternatives. Sleepiness soon overtook everyone. Oh, that's cool. It's got like a first-person perspective. But something woke you up a few hours later, in your half-wake state. You stumbled outside the tent. This is how I talk to myself in real life, you know. Darren? Michael? Celeste, is that you? The mist is even thicker than before. 
I can't see much. You know, like like when I'm making eggs in the morning, it's instead of hey, I'm gonna make some eggs, it's you made some eggs, but you burned them, so they didn't turn out so great. That's when you decide you'd probably be better eating out for breakfast. Let's see, this looks like kind of an entrance. This way is the lake. This way is the lake. The sound is coming from somewhere else. Seems like it's getting louder. Yeah, it's a shadow person. Probably just one of my friends. M Michael! Is that you? Say something, will you? Who are you? Looks like one of my friends. Whoa! Stop right there! I have a knife! Shit! Why are we running away? It could just be someone who needs help. I mean, we haven't identified him yet, right? He's just got a shadow on. Oh, okay. What happens if you're a, you're a friend? You know, it's... I thought you kind of racist. Just because he's black, I mean, come on. Hey, wake up! There's something outside the tent! Uh, I'm sure there is. Lots of squirrels and shit. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Mm, yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. The thing outside looked like you. Oh, oh, I see how it is. They all look the same to you, isn't it? It was probably some animal. I don't think we have to worry about a fox or whatever. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, all right then. Maybe it was just some animal. Wow! What the hell, man? But those sounds. A few minutes later. <laughs> okay, now that was more creepier sounding than the robotic bee noise. Okay, drop it. Whoever that is, I want to sleep already. It wasn't me. Me neither. I didn't sound like any of our voices. Well, shit. Now I'm never going to be able to sleep. Sh should we go outside and look? What if it's some crazy psycho with an axe? All the more reason to check it out. It's not like the tent is some kind of impenetrable fortress. Seriously, if that was one of you guys, tell me right now. This ain't funny anymore. Good thing we have guns, right? Right? Okay, everyone get out together and check it out. I ain't going alone. What the heck is that? Someone was definitely here! Shit! 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 Come down, Celeste. We have four against one here. It'll be fun. What if the dude got some kind of weapon with him? I mean, he killed this little critter, didn't he? Michael's right. We gotta get the hell out of here! We can't just up and leave. It's the middle of the night. What about our stuff? Screw our stuff! I'm not staying here another minute! Fine, we'll leave. But at least bring the flashlight and some food and water. 
This doesn't seem like there's much stuff there. You could probably break down that tent. No time flat for people, but you know. It's just a tent. I think you're overreacting, though. We haven't even seen anyone. Still, someone or something left this dead creature here. We can't exactly go back to sleep with no worries. Well, I guess you're right. I'll go get the flashlight. Everyone bring some stuff with you, uh, you know, you think we might need. A couple of minutes later. Alright, let's go. So what is that thing, a dead dog? Whatever. It's not really a big deal to leave this stuff there. I mean, it's not like it's going to go missing in these woods. You just come back for the next day. How do we get out of here, anyway? North? It's so dark. At least it's still summer. It's not pitch black. It's, oh, okay, game. Just skip the dialogue for me, you know, I, I don't care. Hey guys, you feel like we're being watched? Like there's some kind of guy in the corner of my eye? That's silly. A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. He was swearing and looking all around. We have been walking for an awfully long now. Are you sure we're on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We are on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp, though. I said we were on the right path! But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea where we were. Darren couldn't find the path. Maybe it was the fog. Maybe the darkness. Maybe something else. Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling where you think someone is watching or stalking you. I nearly tripped over Celeste when she fell. Yeah, sure, let's help her up. I mean, what can go wrong? I took Celeste's hand and dragged her to her feet. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. I recognize that tree! We're getting to the cabin! Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something... Somewhere was wrong. I realized the sound from earlier was back. Softer, but still present. I started looking around, panicking. Did a head count, or more accurately, silhouette count. Me? Celeste still holding my hand. Darren in the lead. Michael to the left. Who the heck was the guy besides Michael? My grip on Celeste's hand tightened, and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out, but was worried. If I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I didn't know what to do. I ran my fingers along a knife I brought from camp. Then the cabin appeared out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. Oh. That's not a young pretty girl at all. That's some kind of thing from They Lives. I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. 
the thing turned and walked into the mist. And to think I almost made out of that thing. I caught up with the others as they entered the cabin, practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it. I told them what I saw. Obviously they didn't believe me. He followed us here. He really wants something from us. He doesn't seem to have anything to break down the door with, though. What the hell does he want with us? Hell if I know. Ask him! Hey guys, I think I know what he wants. I think he, uh... I think he wants to kill us. Yeah... I mean, I, I didn't want to say it, but, you know... Uh, I... Someone had to be the bearer of bad news, and... Well, it seemed like no one else was. Oh no. I've seen raptors open doors. I'm sure this thing can. Maybe we should push something in front of the door? Or we have that option? You guys stay here. Or I'm gonna. I'm just gonna skedaddle in case, you know, he breaks it down and kills everyone. Did he go away? over the fireplace. Now, do we have any... Whoa! Oh. Shit! A bastard hit the breaker! But he can't get in, right? Oh, it doesn't seem like it matters anyway. He, he, he's just trying to scare us! Take it easy! Um... I mean, like, while I'm being the logical one out of the group, I don't think he wants to scare us. I think he wants to turn off the lights so he can, you know, sneak in here and murder us easier. But, you know, it's just like the previous topic. I, I'm just one of those guys, you know. Break the mood. You know, I... I like just... I just like keeping it real. Seems like the hitboxes for everything is kind of bigger than an uh oh. Let's see. What's up, girl? It's alright, Celeste. The door is locked, and it's the only way in, aside from the windows. We're safe here. I need, like, I need a gun. Or a knife. Maybe a knife gun. Anyone out there? No? Oh! Who is that? That's a nice trick. Hey, when did you get down there? Hmm. Well, let's see what's going on out front then. Are you out here? No, you seem to only like to hang around that window. Well, that's, you know. You saw something look like me. Suddenly, a strong sense of nausea hit me. There was something in the air. I could feel the horror overtaking me again. 
Oh crap. Ugh. I killed Michael. Or rather, Michael was already... I don't feel so good. Oh god, this better not be a chest burster. Some kind of psychic attack. It's like trees were crumbling out outside. Why am I the only one immune to this? I was just beginning to hit the harness. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to lie down. I couldn't sleep. And I wouldn't have, even if I could. I just wanted to rest. I waited for the world to stop spinning. I looked down a window. A oh, guy. Just out there uh, trying to destroy our minds, I see. There was someone in the tree. I stared back, not able to register what was going on. I quickly pulled the blinds down. Celeste came through the door. She looked pale and disleveled. I dragged her to the bed and laid her down. She was gasping for air, as if something was suffocating her. Eventually, her breathing became more regular. I asked where the others were. She shrugged. The room had stopped spinning a bit. That felt far from good. I'll go look around. Wait here. Suddenly, a voice could be heard from the locked door. What was worse, though, was that it was Celeste's voice. I immediately pulled my knife and placed it at the Celeste's lying in the bed. Her eyes grew wide with shock and alarm, but they could have been faked. Hmm... A bit of a thing situation going on here. But I'm pretty sure the one that was faking as her it kind of, you know, ran away into the woods and... Wait a minute. What if there's more than one? Ooh, that's a bad situation. I was kind of in a trance, unsure what to do and staring down at her. Maybe I would have stabbed her if the voice at the door hadn't changed into some low, deep, guttural voice. Then it became high-pitched, like a little girl's. I pulled my knife away. I snapped out of the trance. Now the nausea was returning. I got to the door and opened it. Oh, this could work out. There was nothing there but a trail of black liquid. Hmm. The thing was nowhere to be seen. Just as I was turning around, I took a look at the roof. There it was. It was close to a corner, about to turn. It looked like an albino male with really long limbs. He had fingers instead of toes. And all twenty of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly, the head swiveled 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up, as if suffocated. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth, slowly and deliberately. I thought it was going to devour me when its tongue snaked out. On the tip of the tongue was my face, like a tumor. Eyes closed, lips upturned into some psycho smile. There's a legend somewhere, that when you see a doppelganger, you die. I thought of that legend, 
but then the creature rounded the corner and it was gone. I lost it and followed, vision hazy. My heartbeat suddenly seemed air splitting to me. That's a uh, it's nice uh, staticky screen creature there, white noise. I was stumbling because my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly, I stumbled forward and toppled down. Once I lay there, face down in the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. I couldn't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and start closing of their own accords. I saw white feet with long fingers for toes step into view. When my eyes opened, Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. In my skin? Get up! Get up! The pastor was in your skin! My head hurt. I was about to ask her what happened when she started pulling me backwards toward the door. We toppled down and stumbled towards Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remembered. I was glad to be alive. The mist had stopped com The mist had stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. How do I know you're not them? She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed. I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up and face buried in his knees. Some clothes, stained with blood, were beside him. They were mine. Darren immediately stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. I asked him what was going on. That thing joined us. He looked like you. We got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road, then Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael. He had a glazed over look in his eyes. The thing burst out of your clothes and jumped out of the car. Michael had the shotgun. He was firing out the window. We saw the thing run all the way back to the house at the friggin' speed of light. It was in my skin. Yeah. I looked down at myself. I wondered if I had been possessed or if worse, the thing had cut off my skin and wore it as a coat. I shuddered at the thought of something crawling around my skin. I asked Michael if he was alright, and I also reminded him that Lincoln Park song is really old. The thing talked to me. I asked about what. He didn't respond. I realized he was sobbing. The car jolted into motion. Darren fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned back towards the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. The thing was in front of the car, on the windshield. It opened its mouth and my tongue face slivered out. Celeste fired the shotgun. The glass shattered and was thrown backwards. Darren shrieked. I saw blood coming from his face. Something pierced my face and I realized it was glass. The car skidded to a stop. The car doors opened, without any discernible reason, and I fell out. The thing lay directly across from me, eyes closed as if it were sleeping. I wish I could close my eyes. Its mouth hung open, and I saw myself again emerging. Hey, I'm you, but I'm a tongue version of you. How's it going? I didn't move or say anything, because I couldn't. My face looked at me and I started to talk. I love you, I love you, I love you, I want to be with you. It repeated over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wondered if it was going to bite me to death. The thing's eyes shot open and I realized it was going to kiss me. Huh. Like some kind of weird, uh, monster, uh, you know, yaoi novel thing. I managed to regain some control and instinctively twisted back from it. 
I guess that was what saved me. So wait a minute. If the standard argument is, if you make out with yourself, it's masturbation. If you make out with a doppelganger of yourself, is that still masturbation, or is that technically a different person? Food for thought. There was a sound like an explosion, and blood spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing near over it. Her face and body were bleeding, and she had this spaced out, psychopathic look to her in her eyes. She had just fired a shotgun. My face looked directly at me. I am you. He whispered. She fired again. I saw my own face begin writhing to nothing more than a skeleton in front of me. The thing's head flowered open. That's the best word I can find to describe it. His head kind of split and split again, peeling away. I saw faces. Lots of them. All on the inside of its head. I think I saw Celeste and Michael's faces. They were whispering something unintelligible. In the center, where the brain should be, there was a single red, cat-like eye that was rotating in its socket. It was producing the mechanical droning sound. Celeste fired one last time. The thing sort of withered away, becoming wrinkled and smaller and rotten, until it just disappeared. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually, I stood up. We got into the car silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. We explained away the damaged car as being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shock-like state. I hear it was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of the incident later, he denied it ever happened, with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead, and he had lost weight. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember, or if he genuinely knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It's been two months now. We still refrain from talking about it. If you were expecting some huge twist or something, you'd be disappointed. I still don't know what we meant out there. I don't want to know, actually. I still have nightmares about my own face, shouting, I am you. One thing I do know, though, I am never going camping ever again. And that's it for Skinwalker. Like I said, it's a game I've had kind of sitting on the back burner and been sitting on my computer for a while, and I finally got around to playing it. I was... I actually didn't really know much about this game, uh, but I was kind of surprised. It's actually more of an interactive novel, or almost a visual novel, than an actual game, I would say. Very much story-based, very much hurting my throat. <laughs> it reminded me a bit of um, some Lovecraftian writing. Not quite the same. But it did have that kind of short story vagueness that he used to like so much. So, I don't think there's much more I can really say about this game. Um, it's a good thing they did keep it vague about what the creature was, because that's... With horror, it's usually better to keep it vague. Uh, like I said, they went for the kind of Lovecrafty and... Uh, the person not understanding the true form of the enemy kind of thing, but... Horror always usually diminishes under very... Under most circumstances, horror usually diminishes if you find out what the creature is or whatever, or if you even know what it really looks like. I was pretty surprised all his friends survived. I would, I was really expecting them to all be dead and be switched around, and I thought that they would play with the body-shifting thing. Like I said, what would have happened if all your friends were the shapeshifters, if there was more than one, then you're really screwed. Because if it's one uh, skinwalker... You can keep that kind of head count going there, like, oh, I saw the skinwalker over there, and everyone was with me over here, so all you guys are legit. And if I see anyone else, I'm probably blowing their head off. If you had more than one, or if you didn't know if there was more than one, uh, then, you, you know, then, it, then it's really up in the air. Of course, then you get a little bit too close to the thing and plot. But not, not that's not really a gripe, though. I was just thought they would play with that. 
Anyway, thank you for watching me play, but really read, the Skinwalker. And I'll see all you guys later.